Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video introduces alcohols, ethers, and epoxides. First we'll introduce alcohols. Alcohols contain a hydroxy group, that's an OH group, attached to an sp3 hybridized carbon. These are often abbreviated ROH, where the R group represents a generic carbon group. The alcohols have this structure. There's the carbon, which is sp3 hybridized, attached to the OH group. We should contrast that with phenols, which are a related compound, but have slightly different structure and different properties. Here's an example of phenol. This species has an OH group attached to a carbon, but the carbon is sp2 hybridized. Another class of related compounds are the enols. Enols have an OH group attached to a carbon as well, and similarly to phenols, their carbon is sp2 hybridized. Alcohols behave differently than phenols and enols. The hybridization of the carbon makes a big difference. In this chapter, chapter 9, we're going to focus on reactions of alcohols. Now we'll move on to alcohol classification. Alcohols are classified by substitution of the carbon bonded to the OH. This is the same classification scheme as alkyl halides used, so it should look familiar. Methyl alcohol describes an alcohol that has no carbon groups attached to the carbon that has the OH. If you attach one carbon group to the alcohol carbon, it becomes a primary alcohol. When two groups are attached to the carbon that bears the OH group, it's called a secondary alcohol. And when there are three carbon groups attached to the carbon that has the OH, it's called a tertiary alcohol. The strategy is find the carbon that's bonded to the OH group and count the number of carbon groups attached to it. This slide introduces ethers. Ethers contain an oxygen atom bonded between two carbon groups. The key is neither one of those carbon groups can be a C double bondo, a carbonyl that would make it a different functional group. They're often abbreviated as ROR. This abbreviation can be thought of as an oxygen sandwich with R groups being kind of like the bread and oxygen being the middle part. Here are some examples of types of ethers. There are symmetrical ethers where the carbon group on either side of the oxygen is the same. In this case, we have a central oxygen with two ethyl groups. This is called diethyl ether. Then there are unsymmetrical ethers. Here's an example of one called methyl tertiary butyl ether where there's a methyl and tert butyl group on different sides of the oxygen. Finally, there's also cyclic ethers where the oxygen is within a ring. Here's an example called tetrahydrofuran or THF, where it's an oxygen in a five-membered ring. Next, we'll look at epoxides, also called oxiranes. Epoxides are actually just a special class of cyclic ether that have a three-membered ring. Here's the structure of an epoxide. You can see the oxygen within the three-membered ring and substituents on either side. This is one representation of an epoxide where the three-membered ring is shown in the plane of the screen. You might also see them represented like this, which is just a slightly changed perspective. In this example, the oxygen is showing pointing out of the plane towards you. You'll see these representations used interchangeably and so will we in the course of this chapter. The bond angles in epoxides are highly distorted from 109.5 degrees, which is the ideal for an sp3 hybridized atom. In an epoxide, the bond angles are pretty close to 60 degrees, and that's quite far away from 109.5. Hence, epoxides have a high amount of ring strain. This is extra chemical potential energy from strained bonds. They almost behave like little springs and want to pop open, which defines their behavior, and we'll see more of that in the later part of the chapter. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.